Mm -hmm. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Uh, Y'all know what time it is. It is the day that um, America celebrates independence, although she still had slaves. Go figure. Um, you know, it's really amazing how we're going so far back. So all the strides that we have made in the last 50 years, um, some of those strides I know because I've been involved in them, are all seem to be taken back because when the Koch brothers were setting up all these Republican um, racist individuals, nobody believed the hype. Well, and you, you really can't expect a freedom to come from a party, whether it's Democratic or Republican. But we should have been gathering our thoughts. We should have been in a mindset where Warlock, Igbo, Watusi, uh, 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 um, you know, um, uh, 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 Mandinka, who, all the tribes that speak different languages. As we are here today, we are different tribes. Some of us are the descendants of the Nigerians, the Igbo, or the Fulani, or the uh, Warlof. And you can see in the difference in a lot of our ideologies, right? Some of us are more upright and conservative, and some of us, uh, we all have different, <laughs> like I said, we're not a monolith, right? But there are some things that have been rising up on the horizon that we should have gotten a full toehold in the door to say, uh-uh, uh-uh, you're not gonna, we're not going to go for this by, by any means necessary. And it's hard to do that when you have self-destructive type of people in your environment. Nevertheless, I don't want to talk about them right now because the bottom line is it should be known that we're not going to let it go on because your ancestors have fought too hard to get to where you are. We've endured lynchings. We've endured bombing of whole cities, neighborhoods. We've endured everything that you can possibly Imagine from this white power structure who has been so hypocritical towards us as human beings that the next time a person says to me, I, you know, they don't, they don't, and they haven't for a while, oh, you're prejudiced. I eat them up every time. How dare you? How dare you tell me I'm prejudiced given the history of your people? And if you don't want to deal with the history of who you are, I would have to be a fool not to be cautious of you and your behavior. And if you was really a righteous person, that you wouldn't be indignant about it. You would understand why I don't trust your ass. You have a history that precedes you of evilness and warmongering and killing of innocent people. But I'm supposed to sit up and go, oh... You're so nice. I forget about that history. Okay, y'all sound like Ron DeSalem. Now this story right here is should be a cause for every black Brit to stand up and uh, uh, at least at least level up. Contact. And be in one accord with your brothers in Cameroon. Or be in touch and be at one with your brothers in the Gambia. Be in touch and be in one with your brothers and sisters in America. Because there is no way in the world these a, a people that love evil and hate so much that this don't fit you, that you don't have to wear it. But those that do, we have to find a way to... Um, really eradicate them from the human experience because they're going to keep us stuck on a level that is so elementary and ridiculous 
that you won't be able to move forward. And I believe, I believe there are enough people and allies that will say, that have to say, and need to say, never again. And if they don't, we still have to say it. Never again will we take what we took before. The Jews ain't going to take it. You think they'll come and let somebody put them in ovens again? Do you actually think that would happen? You know, because that was one of the things that really, really fascinated me. And I guess uh, just come, you know, perplex me as a child. How could a whole country sit back and okay and allow this man to put these people in ovens and nobody did nothing? How did they get that far? It's the same thing that's happening to us today. These people are trying to destroy us, and it is the same destruction. And then they act like they don't know why. <laughs> I've heard somebody say, oh, you guys are so violent. You're just so... I said, listen, you, we who have been the victims of so much violence, perpetrated by you, how would you expect us to act? And we still have amount of sanity compared to everything you've done to us and try to beat out our humanity, but you can't do it because you are not bigger than God. You are not be bigger than a God force that is in an individual. Last week on British National TV, a white adult male threatened to beat up a black child because the child had the audacity the audacity of silently looking at a white woman asking him leading questions. Yes, that really did happen, y'all. And it happened on national TV. A white man threatened to drag a black child by his hair because the child didn't respond to a loaded question. Y'all think I'm making this up? I, I can't show you the video. But I can certainly, certainly let you hear the audio. Push play, damn it. It was a question. <laughs> Missy, I, I've got a question for you. So I know you say you spoke a lot about social media and how that's impacted you and that you want to sort of uh, get a lot of this attention on social media yourself. Do you think that you doing this on social media will encourage other people to commit crimes that potentially could cause a lot of damage? And I'm, but by damage, I mean it could cause somebody to, you know, be incredibly injured or something like that. Do you think you've encouraged that kind of behavior? And he's not answering the question. No, he's Do you think I, I don't understand this whole? Do you want to be like no, a good I, 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 No, hang on a second. Hang on a second. You can do that to me, you're not doing it to a guest. You've stirred another guest again, and I'm going to personally remove you. I, I'm not taking the mic. I'm not taking the mic. You glared at her in a threatening fashion. You do that, I'll drag you out by the hair, and you can be as hard as you pretend you are. You can be as hard as you pretend you are. You apologise to her right now, or you're you leaving. I respect you, but I'm done here. Good, good riddance to bad rubbish. Threatening guest does not happen on my show under any circumstances. Reem, I'm very sorry, but the way he glared okay. at you Thank is not you, acceptable. Andrew. We never should have had him on the show. I didn't even want him here. I think the guy's a complete and total fool. And I, the fact that we, the fact that I attempted to have a sensible interview with an idiot He's like that off. is absolutely off. disgusting. Get and him out of here. Security, get, get, him out. Get, get the security from downstairs and get rid of him. Get, out. get rid of him for Christ's sake. Do you know what? He's get rid of. That was a grown man talking about a teenager and it kind of reminds you of um, the um, the brothers the two or whoever they were that uh, brother-in-law or whatever that uh, destroyed Emmett Till this white man on national TV lost control because the black young man teenager and I don't condone his pranks at all at all obviously 
he needs attention, and all this is done for uh, from a lack of attention. But that's neither here nor there. Here we have a grown man threatening to pull the hair out of a adolescent. And see, the mainstream media, <laughs> they allow this to go on as if we're supposed to continue, continue, continue. Oh, because we're so passive. You know, we're going to have to ring in, um, we're going to have to ring in that people. And we're going to have to close ranks. And we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do about a people that are determined to send us back into slavery. Mental, physical, and we've never been out. But it looks like the climate on the planet is to allow a certain group of us to be quiet. And a certain um, amount of abuse to take place against us. I mean, and it's not even normal. It's not even normal for a group to expect the people to, um, to, 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 you know, put up with such abuse. Because it's, it's just, it's disturbing. It's like, where do y'all, where do you get off saying shit like that? Or where do you get off doing things like this? What makes... And then you, you go back to what you know. If a person has been designed or born into a system of white supremacy, that system permeates their mindset. And so what happens is it'll be a waste of our time, really, to try to eradicate it. It really is. It's a waste of our time. Oh, the people, the good people that know what to do, know what to do. But in terms of uh, uh, black, brown, and other marginalized people, specifically black, a descendants of slaves, you are, they, you are in a situation now where they're trying to replace you. Replace you with immigrants, replace you with foreign uh, Africans who don't really know a history that we know in America. Nobody know the white man like the Ados. Nobody know him like us. And that's why he, he wants to get rid of us. Because we see him in his filthiness. We don't think that they're the greatest country and the greatest people. Because we know we've done it. We know we've done the work to make this the greatest country. And we still haven't gotten our just due. They've taken our land. They've taken our money. they made us work free. And then they asked us why we begging. They wouldn't let us read for over 150, 200 years. And then say affirmative action now is not necessary. Because we're all equal. Because Barack Obama, who had a white mama... His phenotype is not black. Okay? A person that had a white mama that saw through the prism of a white woman and she couldn't deal with it. Pretty much sent him a lot to be with his uh, Indonesian grandparents. But that's, that's not neither here nor there. The point is what Malcolm what Kwame Torre, what all of our great leaders that God has blessed us with, Marcus Garvey, Elijah Muhammad, all these people weren't delusional. Noble Drew Ali, every one of them. I don't make a stance. I don't make a difference. Fred Hampton, I don't care what your religious sect was. I don't care what your uh, religious beliefs are. I know that we have to line up as an African village right here in America and look out for one another on the real real and anybody that's trying to destroy us be it black or white we got to get to jump on it's just that simple now that don't sound good but I believe that is what's going to happen and has to happen 
Now, I'm not advocating uh, violence. I'm advocating self-defense. I'm advocating for equal punishment and equal treatment under the laws and bylaws of America's corporation. I know y'all hear Mufasa. I guess he's trying to say something to y'all this morning. Stop it, Mufasa! I'm very disturbed by this story. The fact that a grown-ass man could sit here and threaten a kid on TV and all black people at this point seem to be caring about is a bag. Um, I, I, I'm... I'm very less concerned about that and more concerned with well, this stuff don't mean nothing if you don't have each other. Anyway, this white woman's name was Reem Ibrahim and she is, wasn't the host of the show. She was actually a guest just like Mizzy was. Mizzy looked um, at her in silence uh, probably disgusted by her not too subtle suggestion that he was going to lead uh, young people into a life of crime. So he was looking at her like she was crazy, like most of us do. Okay? And when somebody asks you something that is arbitrarily just, uh, just crazy, that is when one of the two hosts, a white man named Andre Walker, broke into an angry tirade. Andre was fear he furiously threatened to violently remove Mizzy from the uh, studio. He starts screaming, I'll drag you out by your hair, and you can be as hard as you pretend you are. Look at this. A grown-ass white man is threatening to violently eject Mizzy because the latter dared to look at the white woman who was asking him a ridiculous question. Because that's really what it was. He didn't like how to, he was looking at her. She didn't have that response. But he did. A white man was threatening to violently drag a black child and ain't nobody saying nothing about this in, on national television. When are y'all going to stop with this? What's the end game? A race war? I mean, this was not even a dog whistle. It's a bullhorn. Saying a black child looking at a white woman talking to him was threatening. And it's so overtly racist. It wouldn't even be on Fox here in the U.S. But in the U.K., not only was it okay on TV, but the white man actually is being praised for it. It could have been, yeah, they, they, you know, if it would have happened in America, it just would have happened in America. The racism of this tweet and what's going on is off the chart. We shouldn't be surprised white Brits are praising the violent racists, though. They have been doing that for the last 500 years. The history books are full of eulogies to racist colonizers and genociders. Their streets are lined with statues of colonizers and slave owners. We have to remember that, black people. We've been tolerated. We've never, ever, ever been a part of the American dream. And that's what I believe it because one of my mentors told me that. His name was James Cameron. Y'all know James. He's, a, he's He made his transition now. And the elder all has that famous picture where there's two black young men swinging in one empty rope. That's James. That was James Cameron. That other, that other, um, that other noose was for him. But he said he forgive white people. 
he forgive him because he got loose. He got loose. And he's the only one surviving. Those were his friends that were swinging from that famous picture. I mean, y'all, we have to really get ourselves together because these, these people ain't playing. You know, the fact that the matter is, nobody is really going to win, but people are going to be put back into their designated places. So if this is what y'all want to do, you can't stop the way they the environment is going. But you will not be successful. Understand that. The great powerful Goliath. <laughs> Do y'all know the story? Do you know the story of David and the slingshot? Okay. Touch not God's anointed and don't do his prophets no harm. And you have done all of it. And there's a day of reckoning for the white man. And I just got to say it. It's a day of reckoning for you. And for those of y'all who belong to this absurd, uh, evil, maniacal, elitist mindset. Those of y'all who belong to that. You're going to have to break ties. You're going to have to sever ties. And do like what Moses said. Who is on the Lord's side? Because if you stand with the people in your family that you know are outright racist, then you are outright racist as well. And I don't make no excuses for you. That's my family. That's my family. Uh-uh. There's no black people. There's no black man that's racist. He don't got no power to do anything to you or uh, over you. But you have weaponized whiteness for far too long and in america i mean we just sick of it we just sick of it so listen i'm gonna go thought i'd bring that article to you in fact that article or who brought the story was um uh my lovely susie okay that's who brought the story and um it's insane. This is insane. And we're going to have to do something about this. We're going to have to do better as a human family. Or we're going to have to. Please. We're already separate. Just back off. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. Anyway, if you like what you hear, like, subscribe, and share it. I know a lot of y'all are going to get mad about this. But this is how I feel. And it's an honest assessment so if you like the truth this is what you got the truth i ain't trying to sugarcoat nothing for you and not hurt your feelings when our feelings are being hurt every day i'll see you in the next video not going to entertain your fragility